seven strategies to cover here today. Here we go. Strategy number one, speculating on short-term bullish price movements. We're going to show you a, a, an eight-step process. This eight-step process is what you will need to go through to ensure your profitability. Now, you're not going to make money on every trade. Why? My, 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 my dad, who I love more than life itself, he says, my, my dad, Frank Drew, says, that's just the way it is, son, okay? And the risk of loss is limited to the premium paid for the option. It is possible for you to lose 100% of your investment. It is possible, all right? Advantages, a favorable move in the underlying stock will produce a larger percentage move in the option premium itself. So if a stock moves up, let's say 20%, it's very likely that your option can move up almost 100%. The key here to understand is it's a larger percentage or a magnified move. What makes a stock move? News and rumors. News absolutely makes a stock move. Earnings. Earnings makes a stock move. We all know that. In fact, a stock is almost a function of its earnings. We have good earnings news, it moves up. Poor earnings news, it moves down. Mergers, mergers, M&A activity. I'm saying M&A, merger and acquisition activity, absolutely can give you good signals and bad signals. Um, recently, we're in a, a phase right now, Comcast is making a little bit of a bid for Disney. All right, we've heard about this. What, how is that going to affect things? Well, you know, the impl implications of that. The stock literally, um, CNBC one time said, I've never ever seen a crowd around a stock so much as this uh, merger here, or acquisition. Uh, stock splits. I've recently been involved in some stock splits that have overachieved my most lofty goals, okay? Stock splits. Stock splits are aggressive. Let me say that in a different way. Stock splits are aggressive, okay? They are aggressive. That said, pretty much earmarked for your risk capital, all right? But yet very, very profitable. And lastly, stock buybacks. Interesting to understand that stock buybacks historically were actually illegal. They, they, we were, they were thought to be illegal. And yet nowadays, stocks that are bullish on their stock or companies that are bullish, they'll actually reduce uh, the, uh, uh, the float by buying their shares and putting it back in the treasury. Remember, supply and demand, that's what price is. Supply and demand, if you reduce the float or reduce the supply, it supports the price. It used to be thought that that was market manipulation. Now it's very bullish. When a stock says, oh, they're saying two things, saying, oh, we want to lower, of course, our float and our shares outstanding, et cetera, but we are so bullish that our stock is the best investment out there. Well, kind of they get benefits for doing both, okay? And technical analysis, ladies and gentlemen, is that technical analysis is becoming much more mainstream. I'm finding l plenty and plenty of people who are coming to me to learn about technical analysis. So you'll see stocks literally bounce off their moving average. Why? Why does that become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Because we're all looking at fairly similar charts. We all have a 30-day moving average on our charts. Many people don't have, most people don't have the tools that we do. They're very proprietary. We don't share them unless we educate you on them. But a lot of people, you can have a 30-day moving average. You can have a price from anywhere. You can get a stock quote from anywhere, can't you? They're free. Our proprietary tools, you can't get anywhere. Next, buying a call option. Now, let's follow these eight steps. If you mess up on any of these steps, it jeopardizes your profitability. Let me repeat that. If you shortcut or, 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 or you know, miss any of these eight steps, it significantly will shortcut your profitability. All right? Let's dig in. Number one, decide if you're bullish or bearish. Decide if you're bullish or bearish. Step one, bullish. If you are bullish, you buy calls and you buy stocks in order to do covered calls. If you're bearish, you buy puts you sell covered calls on stocks that you own. Now that's bearish. If you're too bearish, you would, you would need to use a little bit more advanced concept called a collar on a stock in order to ensure that it's hedged, basically. Neutral, trade conservatively, and or use advanced option strategies. I love doing that. That's a spread trades or naked option trades, okay? I enjoy those. Those are very, very profitable. That's why I enjoy them. They're very profitable. So bullish, bearish, or neutral? Well, bullish, buy calls and stocks for covered calls. Bearish, buy puts and sell covered calls on stocks that you own. And neutral, trade conservatively or use advanced option strategies. So we're going to go ahead and use our defining our market posture. Are you bullish or bearish? Well, we've realized from our analysis that we're basically neutral. We say of the, of the Dow and the NASDAQ, it's generally moving up. We've seen some red and green arrows on the charts. And therefore, uh, we're kind of neutral there. As far as the VIX and the VXN, we're a bit bearish. 
So in this circumstance, let's now go back to our slide right over here. We decide if we're bullish or bearish and we are a bit neutral. Therefore, if we're neutral, we understand we can get in. Even though the light's blinking, we can get in. Just be careful, okay? Just be careful. Uh, pick a stock to play. Well, again, where can you go? How, uh, tips from well-meaning friends. I think that's kind of hilarious. Tips from well-meaning friends. I have a lot of friends who really like their stock. Maybe they've owned it for a long time. They encourage me to buy it. That's not the best place to find stock tips. I will caution you there. In fact, I have some relatives who are involved in the farming industry. That's, they buy what they're comfortable with, right? You probably buy what you're comfortable with, whatever industry you're in, whether it's insurance or real estate or whatever. Gentleman, wonderful uncle. His name is Uncle Phil. He loves John Deere. He knows John Deere pretty darn well. Consequently, though, it may not be the best investment for you, Uncle Phil. All right? So just be aware of new opportunities. Tips from well-meaning friends. Market commentary. The market commentary is a fabulous place to find uh, ideas for stocks. We won't recommend and say you should buy this or you should not, but that is where I would encourage you to go to, uh, to learn, kind of self-teach yourself over the next few months and years. We publish three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I believe it's updated about 10 p.m. if my memory serves me, that we'll go ahead and uh, um, you know, kind of keep you updated on stocks and things that are happening. Our pre-built stock searches, we spent our stock class going over our stock searches, and we're going to learn a little bit more about our turbo searches, of course. Uh, pre-built option searches, we don't go over those explicitly. We save those kind of for your one-on-one -on -one coaching. But yes, we do have pre-built option searches, undervalued calls, overvalued options, et cetera. And also your own buy watch list. And you found that through doing our turbo searches. Well, for this example, I'm going to highlight our market commentary. That's where we're going to go ahead and find some ideas, all right? Market commentary. Now, if you'll notice here in our market commentary slide, it is written by Mike Koval. He is a fantastic trader, all right? He's actually highlighted in some of our advanced option DVDs. I've traded with this gentleman for quite a number of years. He is a fantastic trader. He's very uh, kind of succinct in his, in his uh, verbiage here. Succinct, he'll just kind of tell you kind of like it is. But that said, the guy has millions in the market, and so you'll kind of borrow from some of his experience, and he writes about it a few times a week. Doesn't take him a whole lot of time. It works with our website wonderfully. In fact, he has a newsletter right underneath there. If you're interested, take a look at that. I've subscribed to his newsletter for years. Been very, very profitable. If you'll take a look right over here underneath this, we see Chico's Fashions. Uh-oh. Chico, let's read from this. Chico's Fashions is once again back in the news. Scott Edmonds made a company sales pitch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But look at this blue writing right over here. These upgrades, what are the upgrades from again? Uh, immediately following, Chico's received two upgrades. One from Credit Swiss First Boston to Market Outperform and a strong buy from Leg Mason. These upgrades came after the closing bell and should give the strong push a Monday morning. The uptrending stock in an uptrending industry group is currently showing three green arrows with an increase on volume. Hello, that's about what we're looking for, okay? So borrow from that. Use that as a buy watch list. Maybe start paper trading those candidates with our new paper trading account feature. I'm very passionate about that. Use these to start paper trading, okay? So we've picked a stock to play. We've evaluated it. We take a look at the fundamentals. Market guide Zacks, 3.25 or above. You know, price pattern, 2.5 or above. Volatility is appropriate. We're comfortable with the volatility. Industry group is moving up. Big charts, those industry group money flows moving in. There we go. We're going to check the chart in the industry. There is the chart. Generally sloping in an upward fashion. And then let's take a look at the arrows. I've kind of already done that. We see that we have a green on the moving average. We have a green on MACD. And we have a stochastic phantom or a ghost green on the... Uh, the stochastics, as well as an increase in volume. That looks fantastic. The retail stores apparel, generally the slope of the retail stores apparel. Chico's Fashions is a, a woman's retailer. Uh, it is generally in an upward trend. That's ideally, perfectly, well, that's exactly what we're looking for. There we go. We have the stock and the industry in an uptrend. Now keep in mind, let me review this, friends, okay? If you miss any one of these steps, you're going to have difficulty in your profitability. It's not hard to learn these steps. Just like your job or just like anything that you do, it, it follows a pattern. Follow these patterns. Don't miss one of these. Uh, if I get an email from a student that says, I don't know why you know, I'm losing money or something like this, I will go back to this litmus test and they have missed one of the critical steps. So let's, let's learn from my experience. Let's learn from your coach's experience. Let's follow these steps. It'll become very easy. It'll take about two minutes maybe when you're experienced with this. 
So we've now, we've decided if we're bullish or bearish, we are then neutral. We have now picked a stock to play, Chico's. We've now checked the chart. We've realized that the stock and the industry are both good. And now choose an expiration date. And now, if you don't follow this step, you will lose money. Let me say that so you understand. Choose an expiration date. Many people are not choosing the right expiration date. Here's the reasons why. Uh, if you don't choose the right expiration date, uh, several reasons, you're going to be either buying time that you don't need, or you're going to be a, a classic uh, you know, uh, wrong or fault is that we're buying too little time. Now, ideally, we're going to buy one to three months for short-term call plays, four to six months for more conservative plays and trades. More time is more conservative, best for new option investors. Less time is more aggressive. So I ideally would like you to buy more time than you need. Again, that means you're more conservative. I'm all about being more conservative in the beginning. And then as you hone your skills, you will then become, you, you have the license, or I'll give you the ability, or I'll encourage you to become more aggressive. You'll come to us and you'll say, hey, Michael, my last few trades have been 40%, 100%, 120%, 50%. I lost 10%, 20%. I lost 15%. I made 40 You know, those type of things. Hey, fine. That's, that's a good record, you know. You, you're doing well. Now, let's start using some, maybe some advanced concepts because you, you get it. Let's now maybe use some better tools, okay. Uh, that's where we'll talk to you maybe about some advanced options. Choose an expiration date. Well, in this circumstance right over here, the stock, uh, as far as the, it moved from the bounce from home all the way up to the top, it moved in about, oh, I don't know, about three weeks. In this circumstance right here, it bounced from home, it's 30-day moving average, to the top right over here. That took about four weeks. Well, in this circumstance, kind of it stopped moving up. We remember, when we're doing this, we say the bounce from the moving average until it stops moving up. Bounce from the moving average until it stops going up. So if it bounces from the moving average, goes up, and then trades flat, that's the, the time frame. Not when it trades flat, goes from there. So in this example, let me use my little mouse here. This example right here, it bounced from the moving average right here, it go, and it stopped moving up right about there. Then it moved sideways, 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 and then it kind of bounced, and then it moved up to about this area right here. That took about three weeks. Bounced and moved up, that's about two weeks. Bounced and moved up right there, that's about two weeks. Again, bounced and moved up. Again, that's about two weeks. Again, that one, wow, has kind of a consistent pattern. If you add up all those, the three, the four, the three, two, 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 we've got an average time frame to bounce from home, it's 30-day moving average, for about three weeks. All right, so that's how long, on average, it takes to complete its cycle, three weeks. Well, yeah, the stock is right over here. The October expiration is two weeks away. So in this circumstance, the October expiration is two weeks away, and the November expiration is seven weeks away. This is going to kind of be a no-brainer, right, folks? If the ox October expiration is two weeks away, and the uh, November expiration is seven weeks away, and the average move takes three weeks, we'd be probably looking at at least the November options, right? All right. So we'd at least be looking right over here at the November options. So now we've chosen an expiration date. An easy way to think of your expiration date is the following. Whatever time frame you feel that the option will be able to make its move, let's say two weeks or three weeks, whatever it may be, you then, you know, you determine that time frame and then you add a month, okay? So you determine that if it's two, let's say it's, uh, you know, seven weeks, seven weeks, that's close to two months, then you add a month. Therefore, you need to buy a three-month option. Whatever time frame it's in, we go ahead and determine that time frame, and then we then add a month. In this circumstance, we think it's going to be three weeks to make the move, three plus four weeks for another month. That's about seven weeks. That means we, we are okay with the November option. All right? That's our choose an expiration date. Next is remember this strike price. In this circumstance, it seems to move. Remember, I kind of already charted the expected move. It seems to move, on average, a bounce from home about four points. Well, in about a four-point move, let's take a look. Uh, it's bouncing right here, right around the $30, $32 area, $32 area. We've got a green there, again, a green on MACD, stochastic phantom green, volume spike, classic buy signal. We then go over here to our selecting a strike price. The 30-day moving average is near 31. The stock's trading pattern is about four points. And the target price is about 35. So we're expecting the stock to bounce to about 35 in three weeks. Welcome to kind of logical trading. Not emotional, kind of logically is how we're doing this, okay? Stock's trading pattern is 
His target price is 35. Well, in this circumstance, here are our choices. We have a $30 strike price, a $35 strike price, and a $40 strike price. Well, let's go over what would happen when, in fact, the next, what is it, three weeks, the stock moves four points to 35. Well, on expiration day, with a stock at $35, the November $30 calls will be worth the difference. 35 minus 30 is $5. That means we'll have a $5 uh, premium. That's what it'll be. Now, if we use the November $30, $35 calls, if the stock is 35 and the option is 35, that means the cost of the option will be zero. We ideally wouldn't want to use that. And then, of course, the November 40 calls will also be worth zero. Well, that said, there's only one choice. We're going to be then choosing the November $30 calls, worth about $5. The ask price right over here, if you'll see, let's, let me highlight this right over here. It says that CHSKF, the ask price is $3.80. The bid price is $3.60. So, you know, we're going to buy it at the ask the $30 strike price. And our guesstimate over here is that the option will be worth about $5 once the stock makes its expected move. Well, that's not too bad. So, so far, let's review. We've decided if you're bullish or bearish. Again, that's neutral. We've put, picked a stock, Chico's Fashions. We've checked the chart. It's good. Stock's up. The industry group's good. We've chosen an expiration date that will allow the stock's move, that three-week move, to be able to accommodate that move. Three weeks, plus a month, that's seven weeks, that's November. And we've chosen the strike price. If, in fact, that stock does move the expected amount, the option that I'm going to buy, what will it be worth, and does that fit into our profit model? And then plan your exits, plural, exits. Let's take a look. Uh, determine the price target for the stock by looking at the chart. 35, that is our price target. So when you're taking your journal and you're reviewing your notes, by the way, sometimes I have to oftentimes print my trades, so I'll take that graph, maybe I'll cut and paste it and print it, or I'll just print the whole page. When I'm reviewing, and I'll make notes on the page, you know, I bought it here so I know how I can get better at my trades. My, and I'll write there, you know, note to self, price target 35. So I'll know uh, that's what I thought. So on this date, on you know, Jan 1, I thought it would move till 35. And so when I come back that next month, I'll say, oh, wow, I was right. Or, oh, wow, I'm too aggressive. Or, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't get it somehow. I got to improve. That's why we keep that trading journal. Exit at overhead resistance. So you can, by the way, you can sell in any one of these. Say, let me see the first one. If it reaches 35 or 34.80 and starts to keel over a little bit, good enough reason to sell. Exit at overhead resistance. It hits overhead resistance, boom, and it hits that resistance, and it hits it, it hits it, it hits it, it's not breaking through. That's a good reason to sell. Exit on declining MACD and stochastics. So all of a sudden we see that the MACD and stochastics are starting to keel over a little bit, all right? So we see MACD's up and starting to head down. Stochastics are up and they're making some lower lows. Uh-oh, it's a good time to kind of, you know, uh, take your profits. And then you also, excuse me, exit on a down day with heavy volume. What is that saying? Down day heavy volume, it, uh, heavy volume means it's a very emotional day. Get out, get out. And also use a percentage gain on your option as an exit target. One of my favorite, favorite ways is to do that. Now, I use all of these, but I really enjoy, especially if, I don't want to say lazy, but in the summertime, I'm a little bit lazier. I, maybe we all are, I don't know. I, I've always been taught to work hard and play hard, and I really enjoy playing hard. So now that said, I may just target a 40% profit on the option. Now, if you're new to investing and you heard what I just said, you thought that I am maybe some very aggressive, you know, aggressive trader. No, no, no. Is I'm targeting a 40% profit because I know I can get there. And then just earmark some of your money. Let's say you have you know, $10,000 in your option account and you're earmarking, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have it several trades and I'm saying, I'm happy when I sell with 40%. That's $4,000. $4,000 on $10,000 in a month or two, is that, is that a good rate of return? I think that's fantastic, okay? So again, that, it, be open to that. Your coach will be talking to you about that. Be open to that. Uh, use a percentage gain. Key points to remember. You are in a short-term option for a profit, not for the long haul. So if it starts taking money from you, you leave, you fire it, it's gone. It's a business. It's a business. Treat it like a business. You invested some money in your head in order to learn more about this, Treat it like a business. That's what I'm going to encourage you to do. If at any time it looks as if the trade is not working correctly, close the trade and protect your working capital. That's our employees. My money is my employee. I expect it to work very, very hard. 
Thankfully, I don't have to pay any, you know, Social Security, FICA, FUDA, SUDA, MUDA, or whatever I have to pay on that, okay? And that my employee is my dollar. If at any time it's taking money from me, you're gone. You're, you're back to cash, okay? You're out of that hard investment, you're back to cash. So, let's review. We purchased the $30 call for $3.80. <clears throat> We're going to then go ahead and place initial GTC to sell uh, the, the uh, option at $5. Exit if the stock makes a move up four points to about you know $4 above that. So if the stock's at 32, we're going to exit if it meets that four, four point move. Exit if the MACD and stochastics turn negative, and then exit if you see a 50% stop losses hit at $1.90. At any time during the trade, your $3.80 option then becomes worth $1.90, you're gone, you're out of there, not emotionally, you're done. That's called the way it is. That's it, that's good business, it's good money management. Do you hold on to it and then like, you know, take it in and, and dress it up and say, oh, you're my option, you'll, you're, you'll do better. No, that's okay, don't worry about it, you'll come back, don't worry about it. It was those, those poor boys at the, at the schoolyard, they were calling you names, they were calling you unprofitable. You're profitable, you're profitable, you're, no, no, you guys, no, come on, you don't cuddle it, coddle it, it's a business, okay? If it drops, it's gone, that's all it is, okay? So, we've now planned our exit. We're, 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 we're now ready to make the trade. Now, I know this is, it's been a long-winded way to get to our trade, but that's the way successful traders trade. We're going to go A to Z again, all right? We're going to decide if you're bullish or bearish. We're going to pick a stock to play. Again, stock searches, market commentary. Um, I, I would encourage you to use those. Your buy watch list is great. Check the chart. Is the stock moving up? Is the industry group chart moving up? Are we noticing money flow into the industry group? Is it in a good neighborhood? Choose an expiration date. Is it going to uh, facilitate our, our movement? In this circumstance, it's three weeks plus a month. Choose a strike price, the $30 strike price. If the stock makes our expected move, which is about a four-point move, what option would be profitable after that move? In this circumstance, it is our $30 option. Then plan your exits. The GTC, that stands for good till cancel, is at $5. Now that we know the stock, the industry group, what we're going on, our exits, now we're ready to place the trade. So then we go into our broker and we place our order. Now, opening and closing the orders. Historically, we're going to be buying to open, selling to close. So we're, uh, let me, use, again, that language may be a little bit new to you. Buying in order to open a position. Okay, now it's open. And then we'll, we'd call our broker, or you can do this online, then sell in order to close that position. Just different language than a stock. It's a different page on your brokerage website than a stock is. Buy to open, sell to close. If you then get involved in covered calls, you would then be selling a covered call in order to open a position, and then you would buy in order to close that position. Also, that said, that we are buying to open, we'd actually buy to open and sell to open um, uh, spread trades. That's what I do. I do some spread trades. I'm in a spread trade right now, in fact. I love spread trades. They work very, very well for me, okay? So again, that's just, you know, it, it, also another thing, is, an easy way to look at this is it should make sense, okay? So if you're going to buy a position, buy in order to open and then sell in order to close it. Limit order versus market order. I, uh, well, let me go over what they are. You probably already know and let you kind of walk you through it. I'm never, 